William Foley froze in his tracks as an eerie howl resounded throughout the village. It was not that the early morning air was so still, the howl seemed to descend from the heavens and reverberate on the air like thunder from a faraway tempest. Nor was it the juxtaposition of snowdrifts, unseasonably warm temperatures for January, and the haunting animal cry that unnerved fully. It was the singular fact of the howl itself. For there are no wolves in Ireland, he said, as if to reassure himself. Standing on Foley's doorstep with a large bundle under his arm, Constable Ryan stared up to the heights of a duke's castle. No, there are not, he agreed. Come in to see you. One of the duke's men come down to say there'd been a bit of a row and a theft. A woman made off with a necklace. He tracked her into the palisade and found this. He unfurled a blue satin gown, blood-stained and slashed. In his other hand, he held undergarments, equally gory. Sorry to disturb you, Ryan said. No, you're busy. No laying am bum and all of the fixins, referring to the custom of husbands preparing the epiphany feast for their wives. Foley ushered him into the foyer, but a call from the street stopped him before he closed the door. A moment, monsieur. A woman hurried toward them. Are you Ryan? They awaited the French woman, a tall, heavy set girl with a comely face, heavily dressed for a hunt, though she carried no gun. Constable Ryan, she said, tucking the man's arm. It is vitally important that you bring the villagers inside the cathedral before nightfall. I am not exaggerating when I say their lives are at stake. Ryan pulled away. Watch your tone, Mum. I'm not your servant. Listen, she stood, fist on hips. Just listen. The men waited in the silence. The heavy, warm air closed around them, deadly quiet. But no, Foley realized. Horses nickered nervously. Dogs whined. Oddly, he could even hear conversations from a few lanes over. Is it because of the wolf? he asked. No, monsieur. Something more deadly. Deadlier than this, Ryan held out the clothing. Her lips pressed to a tight line. That was done by human hands, she said. What's coming now is far worse. Please, constable, the entire village is in danger. William, Catherine Foley called from within. Close the door, come inside. A moment, Mrs. Foley, he answered. Foley awaited the Frenchwoman, but with a growl, she stalked off. Hi there, Ryan trotted after her and overtook her. Come back and talk to us rationally, ma'am. She rubbed her brow and studied the sky. Very little time. All right. She returned with Ryan and they joined Foley and his wife inside. As the woman passed into the sitting room, she ran her hand along the door frame as though measuring its strength and finding it wanting. Tell me about this dress, Ryan said, looming over her. Is it yours? Is that why you're disguised? She pushed him aside and took a seat. I am not disguised, monsieur. I hunt a vicious creature. But that's not the issue. My name is Madame Duval. I am a scientist. And today my data tell me you, All Ireland, in fact, are facing great danger. After a silence, Ryan cleared his throat. A vicious creature. He again displayed the clothing. Madame Duval took the gown and draped it over one hand to display the slashes. Whoever wore this took a knife to the axillary artery and to the heart. A vicious bastard of a villain did this, but not the creature I hunt. Murder? Mrs. Foley pressed her hand to her mouth. Well, where's the body? These were turned in as you see them, Ryan replied. No body. Ah, she returned the gown. So, whoever wore these, while bleeding to death in the snow, took time to disrobe. She plucked a twig from the skirt. In the woods. The palisade judging from the species. 
Ryan reddened. These probably accompanied some story of theft? Ryan's eyes narrowed. But this isn't the danger you're hunting. No, Constable. I hunt a creature whose howl you heard, but that doesn't threaten this village. Madame Duval heaved a frustrated sigh. She leaned forward intently. You must get these people to safety. Otherwise, your town will be ravaged. By what? What is it you're hunting? Not important, she insisted. Indulge me. Again, she tightened her lips, as if debating whether to tell him. A werewolf, 